going back to the very beginnings. This was really, you know, the place to be. By gunsmith John Dowd in Goshen, Connecticut. <laughs> so he died in March, and he was going to be buried. And they're lucky. So Caitlin, what exactly are you using here right now? So we're using a solution called D2 Biological Solution. It's a biocide um, that kills moss and lichen and clears staining without damaging historic stones. Non-toxic? Non-toxic. So I'm not going to develop anything with Correct. all the spray hitting me in the Correct. knees? Correct. That's really good. Yes, yeah. According to its safety sheet, it is non-toxic to mammals. Wow. So. So. Sorry. You know, when you, when you, when you, when you started doing this, I mean, you, did you just start with soap and water and eventually came to discover this, this material or did you, have you been using this all along? No, actually I did a lot of research. Um, I was asked to clean a, a historic stone by a um, family member. Do you want to clean, spray I that do. side? Um, and I did a lot of research ahead of time because I wanted to make sure I did it without damaging the stones. Um, so D2 is actually what's approved for use at Arlington National Cemetery uh, for the marble markers there that come from Vermont. Oh. Um, hey, so. just in case you're wondering what we're doing, I'm Sean from the Manchester Historical Society. This is another episode of Timestamp. This is gonna be an instructional video per se, but very interesting nonetheless. And I'm here with Caitlin. Hi. <laughs> and Caitlin, I met through social media because I saw this gal, she was doing all this volunteer work going around, cleaning, we've been talking for what, year and a half, yeah. two years, yeah. just, you know, mm -hmm. over, over social media. And I said, we need to tell our audience, more people about the, this work she's doing, all mm -hmm. volunteer, correct? Yeah, yep, all volunteer. And, you know, it's basically to preserve and beautify these stones that often, you know, when you go through and you look at all these stones in here, after 100 years, 150, 200 years, you know, they end up with the lichen. You said, what is lichen? Yep, lichen, it's a, it's a plant growth. Um, it looks to be just on the surface, but it actually has roots deep within the stone. So the D2 works over time, soaks into the stone and kills it um, within the roots so that it will keep it away for a little while. <laughs> the season in which you can clean these is relatively short because you can't really clean them safely in the winter. Um, the water can soak in the stone, it freezes and it causes cracks and can damage the integrity. So so when you come to a cemetery mm -hmm. and you want to clean a stone, who would you talk to? Do you have to find family generally or? Sure, so historic stones, typically you can go to the cemetery. Um, for more recent stones, so I would say you know mid 20th century on, um, you really need to talk to the family because it's the family that actually owns the plot and that owns the stone. Um, so the cemetery is the best place to go if you're talking about stones from the 18th or early 19th century or uh, early 20th. Have you ever been told no? No, I haven't. <laughs> Wait, I haven't. you'd like to come clean? Yeah, when you're done with that, would you like to come to the house? No, just kidding. Yeah, I think a lot of people, a lot of cemeteries want to make sure that I'm going to do it right. They want to make sure I'm not coming with uh, my own sandblaster and blasting a stone from 1795. Um, so, but usually as soon as I say D2, most of them are, are like, okay, great. You know what we're talking about. Right, because <laughs> yeah. you don't want to come in here and blast these with a, with a pressure washer. Everybody Correct. thinks, oh, you go in there with a pressure washer, we'll get yes. that thing clean in 30 seconds. Exactly, and it does, the pressure washer does work quickly, but it can really damage the integrity of the stone over time. Right. So if you go to, you see a stone that's been pressure washed, the surface is a lot of time pretty granulated and, and damaged, which, you know, again, in our lifetime, it might still be standing, but it might ultimately reduce the life cycle of the stone. Right, so how long do we let, let this sit before so we start? Right now what we're gonna do, I'm gonna take a, just this is just a paint scraper you get at any hardware store. Um, you wanna make sure it's plastic. You don't ever wanna use metal on historic stones. Essentially, you want the tool you're using to break down before the stone would. Um, so what I'm gonna do with this is I'm just gonna scrape away some of this obvious lichen here and if there's like moss that's built up on it you want to do that anything we do to the stone we want to make sure that it's wet when we're doing it we don't want to go at it dry that's why we sprayed it with the d2 in advance of doing this and then once you once you and if it starts drying or what we feel is drying off we can add more yes yep the d2 is safe to use if you come upon a stone that isn't uh totally structurally sound and you're not totally sure, you can just spray the stone and walk away. The D2 will work that way as well. If the stone can handle a little bit of brushing, it helps, but um, you can just spray it because it does work on its own. Do you have a second time. one? Do you have another one? Yes, I do. I have a lot. You have a lot? Yes. So go. I'll work on the back side. 
So as, as we scrape this off, so this isn't one of those instant gratifications where we spray this on and boom, it looks brand new. Like it just came, you know, it was just put into the ground. Correct. It really varies. Sometimes I spray them, I scrub them, I rinse them and the effect is immediate and it's really exciting. Like, wow, it looks great. Um, sometimes it takes a little bit of time. The D2 has to soak into the stone and lighten it over time. I was telling Sean earlier that I cleaned a stone last year, came back after, you know, a week and it was pretty good, a lot better. But when I came back a year later, it was like a brand new stone. Um, that's how much time it can take. So it, uh, yeah, definitely a lesson in delaying gratification for sure. Right. You have to learn a little patience. <laughs> yes, which is good for me personally, but. Now, as you work on these stones, do you ever think about the people that, that are here or have, what's been the, one of the most interesting stories that you've, you've um, learned? For sure. So I, that's actually one of the, my favorite things about it is learning more about the people um, in the ground here that, that own this stone. Um, so there's a lot of stories that go um, just unknown by everyone because, you know, how this person just lived a normal life and died and that was it. So. Um, I find myself drawn to the stones of young women and children as a mom myself. Um, and there's a lot of those in these historic cemeteries. So um, just yesterday I cleaned the stone of a woman who uh, gave birth to twins and passed away in childbirth. And her one of her twins died immediately after birth and the, next, the other one died nine months later. Um, so it's pretty, uh, pretty harrowing stories that you can find. Uh, for sure. So we're at Delwood Cemetery. I can't remember if I said that or not. So just in case for <laughs> clarification purposes, we're at Delwood in Manchester Village. I happen to also be a trustee here. And so I've learned the stories about a lot of these stones, probably too many stories because you know, I myself <laughs> find it very interesting. But mm -hmm. you know, Evelyn Willing, Evelyn Willing was actually the granddaughter of Judge Mark Skinner, who was over there, and the great granddaughter oh, wow. of Richard Skinner, who was the governor of Vermont. Oh, wow. And she had come to Manchester. You can see she was not very old. She was born in 18, July 3rd, 1873, the day before Independence Day, and hmm. died on August 14th, 19, 1905. And she was in Manchester for, for a month, the month of August, because she was going to get married. And her fiancé is just, just over here, just out of the camera shot. Mm -hmm. um, he was the third deputy police commissioner of the city of New York. So this was going to be a big affair. And they decided to go down and have lunch at Mount Hope in Williamstown, where Arthur Rockefeller Prentice lived. And they left Manchester in their car. And at Pike's Crossing, uh, which is at the foot of Harwood Hill, today it's an overpass, they got struck by a train. Oh. And the, the, the chauffeur and her nephew were in front. They survived. Wow. And they, he died on impact. She died just a few minutes later. Wow. And it was considered, okay. it was the first uh, train on automobile fatal accident in the state. Wow. And it actually led to some changes in the rules, obviously, and because the train was backing, you know, <gasps> was back, was backing up because that's how, you know, you can't yeah. just, you know, turn a train yeah. around <laughs> quite easily. So even today, <laughs> yeah, even today, have we scraped off enough? Yes, we have. Uh, one thing I want to point out is you might notice a little bit of discoloration and I don't think you probably see it on camera, but up here you see it has turned a little bit reddish color. Mm -hmm. um, and that is normal uh, with marble stones. It's a discoloration that happens as the D2 soaks into the stone and starts to um, kill the lichen. So if you do come back to your stone and you see a kind of reddish rust color, don't be terrified that you've ruined the stone or anything like that. It will go away with time. It just needs to kind of work its way out. Right. So can you pass me the, the other sprayer? This one? Yes. There you are. So one of the most important elements of this process is water. So not all cemeteries have running water. Um, I don't know if Delwood does. It does. Oh, I see a hose right yeah. there. Um, not all of them do. So I usually have to bring my own water. So I have a couple gallon jugs um, that I just bring to, to do it because the stone needs to always stay wet. So especially for a bigger stone, um, you're going to need a lot of water. And I just use these manual uh, garden sprayers and we have an assortment of natural fiber and acrylic fiber brushes. So again, no metal brushes. These should break down before the stone does. So what we do is we spray the water and see, notice how it's kind of soaping up because yep. of the D2 and the spots that are wet, we just scrub in sort of random circles. 
So it's kind of like wax on, wax off. Yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, one thing I want to point out what I'm doing here, so this is actually just a toothbrush, um, but uh, it's, I find that it's a good soft uh, brush to use for this kind of detail work. So Evelyn has a really nice sort of Celtic design here that matches that of, of her family members. So if I use a toothbrush, it can kind of help clear the moss and the lichen out of those kind of hard to reach areas. So now I think what we do after we scrub is we usually let the D2 sit for 10 to 15 minutes and then we rinse. Okay. Well, we'll be right back then. So we're back. And now we've let it, we are, I can already see the difference. Yeah. Yeah, and so now we're gonna spray it with some water with again, just the manual pressure sprayer, like a garden sprayer. Um, so I'm gonna start at the bottom so we can kind of see. So this, this, isn't, this is not made by Pepsi, so we're not doing like a commercial plug <laughs> here. And, and Haas will, I'm sure, make this, but this is D2. So you have to go, I mean, it works on masonry, stone, concrete, wood, asphalt shingles, mm -hmm. vinyl and aluminum, siding, fiberglass, metal, paint, canvas, etc. Remove stains from mold, remove stains from mold, mildew, algae, lichens, and air pollutants. Mm -hmm. Non-toxic and no scrubbing necessary, although we did a little we time scrubbing. We did, because the stone could handle it, yeah. So if people wanted to find this, where would they find this? Sure, so um, you have to go through an authorized dealer, and D2's website has a list. Um, there is one uh, authorized dealer in Vermont, in Barrie. Um, and you can also order it online from some of the other distributors. So um, it is pretty pricey, so that's why it's good, um, you know, for things in your home or other things that you're cleaning that aren't gravestones, there are uh, probably cheaper options. Uh, but the good thing about this is that it will not damage uh, historic stones. So that's why. So if somebody were going to clean the family plot, let's mm -hmm. say, how much, how, so was this a brand new jug when we started with this one stone? Um, no, so uh, this is about a gallon. A gallon runs right around $40. Um, and I would say that for graves around this size, I can usually get three to five from a gallon, and that's, you know, generally speaking. Um, but yeah, so for a family plot, I would think, you know, a couple of gallons. If you're doing more than that, you know, you'd need more. Yes. Yeah, and come back and see it. You know, I, I remember all the ones that I've done, and so I travel when I'm near that cemetery, I just drive through and see how it's, um, how it's going. And if you come in it and you're not seeing a big difference after a couple of months, um, you can just come spray the D2 again and just walk away. Um, it's best not to scrub it more than once because even gentle scrubbing does remove some of the exterior um, of the, uh, the exterior surface of the stone. So really I only ever scrub once, but if it needs a little bit of help, I can spray more D2 and that will help clear it up without damaging the stone. Any parting thoughts that you want to share? Just any little tidbits? Um... <laughs> um, I'd say definitely like get out and enjoy your local cemeteries um, and contact your towns or your, uh, the cemetery associations and find out how you can help because uh, there's a lot of people um, trying to do this work and there's just not always the manpower and the funds. So um, there's a lot of great resources through your town's historical society if you have one or just the town um, itself and some of these private cemeteries like Delwood, the right. associations that own them. So and VOCA, you know. you've, you've, you've had. Yes, yes. So I am uh, the Bennington County representative for Vermont Old Cemetery Association or VOCA. Um, and they're doing a lot of great work making sure that um, Vermont's historic cemeteries are preserved. Um, so take a look, look them up online, and um, they're happy, always happy to have help. And it's VOCA.org, I think. Yes, okay. yes, or yeah, I so believe so. If you Google it, you'll find it yeah. for sure. <laughs> but um, yeah, they're, they're great. They're a great organization. So. so that would be, so if people have questions that they wanted to try to reach out to you, would it be best for them to go through VOCA, or do you have like an inquiry email or any I other don't. contact? I don't. Yeah, definitely contact VOCA, and you can use my name, and they'll, they know where to find me. They know all my information, so. <laughs> well, I found this to be, you know, absolutely enriching and to think that and you know not that I need yet another hobby but this is something <laughs> I could certainly see because now this will be you know I'm gonna have to come back yeah to take a look yeah so I'm gonna have to find myself some d2 and mm -hmm. I can't thank you enough for coming up right, well thank you morning. for asking me this has been really cool I'm you know, excited about this and I wish you all the best and I'm gonna follow you I have a TikTok because <laughs> of my kids so I'm gonna follow you on TikTok thank you so so thanks everybody for being here and we'll see you again next time